So we're going to begin now another series um, about Mashiach, Mashiach mystery series, and the topic of this series is going to be about Mashiach and Tefillah, Mashiach and davening. So over the next four weeks, we're going to we're going to learn about different. Um, ideas, different in Yanim about Mashiach and Davening. So, some more specific, some more general. So, tonight's topic is about Davening for Mashiach. Is Hashem answering us? In other words, the question of tonight's Shia is that we've been Davening for Mashiach for thousands of years, hundreds of years, and uh, our Shemun Esri is, is, is filled with Bakashes request for Mashiach. Um, I think six out of the nineteen brachas of Shmona Esrei are requests for the Gula, starting with you have to Kabashe for Gadol as a request for Kibbutz Goliath, um, Hashiva Sheftenu as a request that Hashem should bring back our judges, our advisors. Um, and then you have the Lidu Shalayim is a request. We're asking Hashem to rebuild the Beis Hamikdash. Semach David Avdecha. We're asking that Hashem should bring Mashiach Himself. Sachzane Ineidim B'Shum Chalutim Barachamim. We're asking that Hashem should bring back the Avodah in the Beis Hamikdash. So we have so many Bakoshes again and again. We're asking three times a day, again and again and again, and we're still in Golis. So the question is, what exactly are is our Tefillahs accomplishing? If after all these hundreds of years. Um, Thousands of Jews are still davening for Mashiach, and, and we're still here. So we're going to analyze this in many different, uh, many different ways, many different levels, explain it in many different minakal uh, or from basic to more, more advanced. So the truth is, if we think about it, it's not just a question regarding Mashiach, but really it's a question in general regarding our tefillahs. So we ask not only for Mashiach, we ask for other things as well, especially in Shemayna Esrei. And we have the same question, so what's going on over here? Is Hashem really answering us? So now when it comes to other things, maybe it's not so clear. We're asking, Hashem should give us understanding. So, you know, we could, we could, when it's not always clear to us, did Hashem answer us? Did He not answer us? Right? Did He give us an added inspiration or, or not? We're asking that we should be forgiven, so we assume that we were, were forgiven. It's not so black and white. Or even Parnasa or Rafua. So a lot of times we don't know exactly Baruch Hashem, we're here, we're alive. Hashem is, you know, gives us health, all these things. So it's not always so black and white. I think the que- the question is really black and white when it comes to our request for the Geula, because it's clear that we're still in Golas, despite all of our Bakashis for the Geula. But, of course, the, the, it's a general question. So in Derech Mitzvah from the Tzamach Tzedek, the third of the Chabad Rebbe, so at the beginning of this, the Mimer uh, entitled Shredish Mitzvah Satfila, so he he addresses this question, what's the whole purpose of davening? So he begins, I'm not going to read the whole thing inside, but he begins that the truth is that there is a whole machloikis, there's a dispute among the different, uh, among the different paiskim, the halacha quantifiers whether tefillah is the rice or not, whether it's min or not. So, his conclusion is that most of the most of um, most of the opinions they hold. You see, in the third line it says, "Achmi de raisa hu ha mitzvah she is power ha adam viyavakish beis min ha itim asher yitzdarat ladavu min hadvarim." Says the mitzvah from the Torah that a person should daven and he should ask. Whenever it is, whenever he needs something, for example, at a time of need, time of distress, then it's a mitzvah min min that Hashem has commanded us that if a person needs something, he should only ask Hashem that Hashem should help him out. Now, what's the purpose of this mitzvah? So the Tzamach Tzedek explains, V'zehu mishosheho emuna. This is one of the foundations of our faith in Hashem. How so? V'hu l'fisha al yedeze yeda v'yavin. It's because through this a person will know and understand. 
Shahashem is Baruchu Levade Hamane Gelame, that Hashem alone, He is the one who runs the world. Umashgiach Bechol Prati Briyaisav, and He's the one who watches over all the details of His creations. Vichiloy Levade Hayacholas Lahishia, and how Hashem Himself is the only one who has the ability to save Him. In other words, the purpose of davening, says the Tzamach Tzedek, is it's really for us. Davening is for us that we should strengthen our Muna in Hashem. If whenever we need something, so we turn to Hashem, so then that will, that will uh, ingrain in us the, the feeling and the, and the recognition that Hashem is in charge. And it's only in Hashem's hands to, to fulfill our request. And he says, and he continues over here, that's actually one of the foundations of Amunah that the Ramam says, is that you have to believe that Hashem alone is in control of the world. And no one else is in control. You can't dive into anyone else or anything else. And then he, a couple lines down, he continues, He says, based on this, it's, it's obvious. That davening isn't only for tzaddikim who are sure that Hashem is going to answer the request. Anyone who needs to ask It's a mitzvah to ask from Hashem. Sometimes his request will be accepted and answered and fulfilled. Sometimes not. And other words, the Sama Tzadik is saying the purpose of davening is about strengthening your emuna that Hashem is in charge. Whether Hashem is going to answer you or not, so that's up to Hashem. He might decide that he should answer you, sometimes not. He says it's, it's like a person who gives a request to a king of flesh and blood. Anyone can dive into him. And sometimes the king will fulfill his requests. In other words, it's not for sure that Hashem is going to answer you, but the point is not about Hashem answering answering you. The point is that you have to strengthen your Amunah and Hashem. So over here he's talking about davening in general, but we can understand the same thing applies to davening for Mashiach. If we wouldn't daven for Mashiach, so we might think, we might, we might forget that it's up to Hashem ultimately to bring the Gula. By davening for, to Hashem for Mashiach, it strengthens our Muna that Hashem is in charge and Hashem can bring the Gula whenever Hashem deems that it's He's ready to bring the Gula. So then this is the most basic understanding that of course Hashem is listening to our tefillahs and, uh, and, and it's up to Hashem whether He's going to fulfill them and when the time comes Hashem will decide to bring the Gula. However, in other places in Chesidus, it explains it. Uh, it explains that the truth is is that whenever we daven Shemana Esrei, Hashem does in fact fulfill our requests. And there's many different explanations, many different biyurim, exactly how this happens and in what way Hashem fulfills our requests. And that's what we're going to discuss over here. So over here we have a quote from the Maimer Al Shlisha Dvarim from Tavshin Gedalit from the Rebbe. The Rebbe says as follows. The fact that in every request that we ask in Shemana Esri, we conclude the bracha with Baruch Atah Hashem, a bracha with Hashem's name. Muchach, from this it's clear, It's clear that even when any individual davens, there is no doubt that Hashem is fulfilling his request. It's, this is really based on what it says in Tanya and Geras HaTshuva, we'll get to that soon. But anytime you say a bracha, if you have any doubt whether you're obligated to say the bracha, then you can't say the bracha. That's the halacha, Savi bracha, Slahakil, right? Um, you can't say Hashem's name in vain, you can't say a bracha levatola, you can't say a bracha in vain. So, if it wasn't 100% sure, that Hashem is fulfilling our requests in davening, we wouldn't be able to say a bracha. We can ask, but we wouldn't be able to say baruch atah Hashem. But in Shemana Esrei, the Anshei Knesset Sagdailah, they established that we should say a bracha. From this, it's clear that Hashem is fulfilling our, 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 our requests. So what's happening? It says, It's possible that the hashba should come in, it should come in, 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 the, in the spiritual worlds. 
It's possible that it comes down here, but only in a spiritual way. For example, the example that Al-Turabba talks about in Tanya, you're asking for Hashem to, full, uh, to forgive you. So Al-Turabba says, it's for sure that Hashem forgives you. Now forgiveness is a spiritual thing. It's about a, your connection between you and Hashem. So that's something that happens for sure. Hashem for sure for, uh, forgives you. But when it comes to a physical thing, so it's not for sure that all of our requests are, gonna, are going to be fulfilled in the physical sense. That's what it says in this mimer. So now applying this to the Gula, so let's look over here in this next sicha, which is from Shabbos Parshas Vaira Tavshin Memdalit, 1984. So at that time, the Rebbe was speaking and very much about davening for Mashiach and about how it's important that every Jew should demand and ask from Hashem Ad Masai till when will be in Golos. And unfortunately there were some other, other, um, other Jews or other people that questioned whether that it's, is it actually appropriate um, for us to demand and ask that Hashem should bring the Geula and and uh, and is it really, are we really serious that we want Mashiach now? So the Rebbe over here is going to quote a very similar idea, that, the, the, similar to the idea that we just learned in the Maimur from the Shalah. So, on the second line, Yeshna Matoyinim, some people say, How could we bring any proofs from the Nusach of Davening? Every single day, we're asking that Hashem should make the sign of David, your servant, flourish quickly. In other words, that Mashiach should come. 1900 Nevertheless, 1900 years have passed and we haven't yet been saved. So, how could you bring a proof from the fact that we're asking Hashem to bring Mashiach soon that we really mean it and we really want Mashiach now? So, the Rebbe answers as follows. This question was already raised in the Shalah. And the Shnei Luchas Habris from Rabbi Shaya Horowitz. This is what he says. So now there's this concept that whenever a minion davens, Hashem answers them. So the Shalah asks the following question. This concept that our sages say that Hashem doesn't despise the prayer of a minion, of Rabbim, of the multitudes. You can ask, seemingly. I see that it is not so. All Jews daven it three times a day. And the Gaul is mentioned many times in davening. I missed that one before, right? We asked that Hashem should see our oppression. For Godel, he should blow the great shofar. Hashiva Shefteinu, he should return our judges. That Hashem should come back to Jerusalem. Right? The Shalom is talking in his days. It's been more than 1,554 years in his days. In Golas and Artfilas are blocked, they haven't been answered. So the Shalom is Mairuch Levar in Yenzev. The Shalom explains this concept at length in a Kudus Hadvarim. And the point of his explanation is as follows. He makes the point, first of all, he says, davening is a mitzvah. The Indian Shmias Hatfila, Hisha Kadush Borchu, Boicher What does it mean when we, we, when we say that Hashem listens to our davening? It means that Hashem chooses it, He accepts it. Then there's another concept that the angel, he ties it and makes a crown for Hashem. However, it's not for sure that Hashem is going to fulfill and do for the person what he's requesting. Hashem accepted the mitzvah that the person did. Just like Hashem accepts every mitzvah that a Jew does. Although not necessarily will Hashem send a bracha for doing the mitzvah, but Hashem accepted the mitzvah. 
Remember the last, the effect of the mitzvah is there above and the reward is kept for the person. So the Rebbe sums up, this is from the Shalah, Kalayma. So what does the, the Shalah mean to say? The same concept that we learned in the mind with, that davening affects what it does above spiritually. Meaning, even if you don't see it in this physical world, but it happens in the spiritual world. And now the Rabbi adds a very important thing. So a person might ask, okay, so it happens in the spiritual world, but what do I gain from that? Right? Says the Rabbi, on the contrary. On the contrary, for a Jew, the main thing is his neshama, is his soul, the ruchnias, the spirituality. His body is secondary. So, the, the fact that it's affecting something spiritual, spiritual, that's not just a side thing, that's not just a secondary thing. The truth of everything, the, the ikur, the main existence of everything exists in the spiritual world. It's only it's only that of course we have to bring it down into the physical world, right? We can't be satisfied with the fact that it's spiritual. But it doesn't mean to say that the fact that it's in a spiritual sense is not real. It's real and it's important, but it's not enough. So that's the next point. That biachidim zeb pashut. At the same time, it's obvious. Anyone who says in their davening that they're asking for a Mashiach and they're thinking that they don't want it in the literal sense, that the Peter's Tfilah is Elu, or Peter's Tfilah is Chanayna Meitcha Chachma, or Feinu, or Bakashu, or Samil Tzrocha, or Bailamaza Kibshuta, right? In other words, if you're thinking that when I, that, oh, Reina van Yenu, let me, let Hashem give us a spiritual geula, bring Mashiach in a spiritual sense. So then, Hare the Hepech Hapsang Din, Hepech Kiyama Mitzvah Say Tfila, right? That's not the halacha, that's not how you daven. Davening means, Kefisha Haramam, Vechule Mavarim, I said, how the Rama, Maimonides, and others explain that, uh, that, um, that it means to, 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 uh, to daven. For, for, for the for the for these things in the literal sense, nice of all the gamzeik or heipach piyush hamis the tefila, right? It's also the main thing. It's that's not the simple meaning of davening. So in other words, basically, the Rebbe is saying is that of course Hashem is answering us. Of course Hashem is making it happen in a spiritual sense, but at the same time, obviously, we're davening for Mashiach in the literal sense. So that's one point. Then the Rebbe says, that the truth is that the Shalah himself, when he starts his explanation, he emphasizes that the truth is that, that in a certain sense, Hashem does fulfill our request in a physical sense. We'll talk about this a little bit more at the end of this year. It says, The truth is that Hashem does listen to the Tfilah of the Tzibor, of the congregation. But that doesn't mean that Hashem is going to fulfill literally everything they're asking for. Rather, what Hashem does, he, he fulfills it in a certain way. He does something which is similar to what they're asking for. So how is Hashem sending the Geula? Says the Shalach, Every single day there is a redemption. What's the redemption? The Hainu Kivsa Achaz bin Ayn Zaevim, the Jewish people were like a, a wolf, sorry, were like a lamb among 70 wolves. Yav Shalal Hiskayim, and naturally, according to the natural order, it's impossible for us to exist. And every single day, our oppressors and our enemies are rising against us to annihilate us. Hashem is saving us. So there is a gula happening every day. So in other words, the Shalah is saying two points. One point he's saying is that every time we're asking for Mashiach, it's happening in the spiritual sense. Furthermore, he says when you have a minion davening, then Hashem will also bring some type of gula in the physical sense. And in the continuation of the Sikha that I'm not going to uh, read inside, 
So the Rebbe points out that unfortunately there are, there are many people that have quoted the Shalah, but they have only quoted part of, they only quoted his question and not his answer, and unfortunately they're using it to uh, promote the opposite of Amos Yisrael, and um, the point is, is that uh, that's not the way you should learn Torah, and unfortunately that a person who speaks in such a way, you get have also a neg- negative effect on all those who listen to him if he's a person who's in, the, who's in authority. So that's on the, on, on the negative side. But on the positive side, we know that we have to know the truth that every time we dive in, Hashem is listening. Okay, so now the truth is, on this idea, on the next Shabbos, on Shabbos Pashas Boi, so the Rebbe um, spoke about this concept more at length. Um, and the Rebbe said that in a certain sense, you have to say that Hashem is listening to us and it's happening in a physical sense. So before we, before we get to that Sikha, so let's first learn this part of Tanya from Geras HaTshuvah, the third part of Tanya in Perk Yidal from chapter 11, which is the basis of what the Rebbe is talking about. So over here, the Rebbe, once again, the Rebbe emphasizes this, this idea that Hashem always fulfills our requests. So basically, over here in Tanya, the Alter Rebbe is talking about a person who's worried that maybe Hashem hasn't forgiven him. Maybe he did Shuva, but maybe Hashem didn't do, maybe Hashem is not forgiving him. So the Alter Rebbe says that a person needs a Betzirof Oid Ho'ya A person needs to believe and needs to trust it says his heart has to be steadfast. You have to trust in Hashem. That Hashem is, is, wants to do kindness and He's gracious and He's compassionate and He, for, and he, for, and he, and he forgives a lot. Take from me, As soon as you request Hashem to forgive, forgive you, Hashem forgives you. The Lishum Suffix Uspeks make a Bailam without any shadow of a doubt in the world. And what's the Alter Rebbe's proof? As we say a bracha on every Shemayna Esrei, as soon as we, we request um, that Hashem should forgive us, we say, We say, Blessed are you, Hashem, the gracious one who forgives exceedingly. Now, now we know that if you have a doubt whether you have to say a bracha, you're lenient, meaning you don't say the bracha. Because of the concern, maybe you're saying a bracha in vain. So obviously it must be, It must be that there is no doubt. Since we asked and we requested from Hashem that He should forgive us, and pardon us, so it's for sure, 100% we have no doubt that Hashem is going to forgive us. And therefore, we could say a bracha with Shem Umalchus, with Hashem's name, Baruch Atah Hashem, Chanun Hamar Belesloyach, that Hashem forgives. Now the Alter Rebbe anticipates the following question. Seemingly, what's the next bracha that we say in Shemona Esrei? Goyal Yisrael. We say that Hashem is the Redeemer, of the Je- He redeems the Jewish people. Now, seemingly, the Geula hasn't come. So you can tell me, again, that Hashem forgave me. That I'll trust the Alter Rebbe. It's a spiritual thing. I can't see it with my own eyes. I'll trust that it happened. I'll trust that Hashem forgave me. But I, I'm, I, the Geula didn't come. That we can all agree. So the Alter Rebbe answers the question. And again, we say a bracha. We say, Goyal Yisrael. We make a bracha. So seemingly the same thing should apply. So the Alter Rebbe says like this, If not for the fact that we would go back and sin, we would be redeemed immediately. Like we say the bracha, So in other words, you see that we say a bracha. So it's something that's happening for sure. So why doesn't it happen in the literal sense? Because Al Rebbe says that we go back and we sin, and since we go back and sin, so we're not yet ready. You know, that, that's delaying the that's delaying the gula, and that's why the gula doesn't come. So now the obvious question over here, which the Rebbe asked in the sicha, which we'll learn right now, 
The Rebbe, in the Rebbe's Burium on Geras HaTshuva, the Rebbe explained to Geras HaTshuva that there's a chayim in the Muvan. The question is, seemingly it's not understood. Das was chayim in is doch el shpeter. When, the Alter Rebbe is saying that the Geula doesn't come because we sin. When do we sin? It happens later, right? In other words, right now I'm davening Tashem. I say, Baruch Tashem Goyal Yisrael. So the Geula should come then second. Fine, a minute later I sin. Fine, but it, when I said when I said the bracha, the Mashiach could have came then. Nach dem vas memachti brachas lachlan goyel Yisrael, v'ayin bin time is is in the talking zman of chaytazan, right? There's no time to sin in between those two brachas. Is oim bin eibish to hadzichu meichel given. So if Hashem for sure forgave us, and now once Hashem forgave us, our avodas are gone. But gedav glad kum and Mashiach nach the bracha goyel Yisrael. The Mashiach should have came right away, as soon as we say the bracha goyel Yisrael. That's the question. Answers the Rebbe as follows. There'll be in them. The explanation is as follows. Thus was the Alter Rebbe zok miyad. When the Alter Rebbe says miyad, immediately, that Mashiach, the Geula would come immediately. What does he mean? Is not the Pshat as Mashiach davshen kumen. It doesn't mean that Mashiach himself should have came immediately that second. Nor is Davzich Onhei ben der Ganzer Seder Vasadon Bias Mashiach. What the Rambam, what the Alter Rebbe means, is that the whole process, the whole sequence of Mashiach has to begin. Which means, as I talk freer, that Eliyahu Hanavi Kumin, right? Take freer, right? A a day before Eliyahu has to come, or three days before, and without blood and shoifer, then there's going to be a shoifer blast. V'chulei is in the outside shine the other chayzim v'chaytim. So in that whole time, then already we go. You know, Jews are sitting. Ubefrat with the gemara zok gimel aver say another mitzvah him b'chayim. Especially the way the gemara says that there's three sins that a person isn't saved from any day. Um, it says uh, like uh, I think machshav uh, azores and even tefila. It's the same avak lashin hara. In other words, basically, what the Rebbe is saying is like this. When you say, Baruch HaTah Hashem, Goyal Yisrael, Hashem, in, in fact, starts the process of Geula. Hashem starts that process. Now, the fact that we're going and we're sinning, so we're delaying the process. But it's not that, it, it's, not that it's not happening. So, in, the, in, the, in getting back to Tavshin Mandalant, in 1984, that next Shabbos, in Shabbos Parshas Boy, so the Rebbe emphasizes the, it, it, this point that in fact our davening is actually every time we daven we are in fact hastening the process of the Geula. Now, of course, because of our avedus, we might be slowing down the process on the other on, on the other side. But the point is, is that when we're davening, every time we daven, you are hastening the process, and so that's what the Rebbe clarifies in this sicha. And the Rebbe in that far bringing. On that Shabbos, the Rebbe was discussing beforehand the concept how all of our Aveda were like Kenana Salgabi Anak. We're like a we're like a a midget on the top of giant's shoulders. And meaning to say that everything that was done in previous generations um, is bringing us to where we're holding at this point, and we have all of the Teremitzvahs and all of the and all of the Avaidah that was done in previous generations. So the same thing applies, says the Rebbe, to our davening. This is that we say that our generation, this generation of Mashiach, it comes as a continuation of the effect of previous generations. We're like a midget on giant shoulders. So this will give us an added explanation in addition to what we mentioned from the Shalom in the previous Fabrengan of Shabbos Parshas Vo'era. It is Kiyom Bakashas Atfil, about how Hashem is fulfilling our requests in our davening. Al Hashem la yitochen shebnei Yisrael mevakshem b'tfilosam ala geula v'adayin l'inenu. So this question that how could it be the Jewish people are davening, we haven't yet been answered. Ma'kdam ha-shalom levar, the Shalom first prefaces to explain. Right? He prefaces that our davening, the effect is above in the spiritual worlds. 
the reward is is kept for us over there. Void ve'ikir, and again he says another point. That in fact Hashem actually does something which is similar to what we are requesting. Every single day there is some type of geula. <coughs> the fact that our oppressors are rising against us and Hashem is helping us. So that's a summary of the previous Fabrengen from the Shalah. Now let's add another point. The Alt Rabbi explains in Geras Atshuva that when a Jew requests from Hashem a certain request with a bracha, it's for sure that this request is fulfilled without any shadow of a doubt. Because the, if there's a doubt whether to say a bracha, you don't say it. So obviously you have to say that when we are requesting and asking for the geula, our request is being fulfilled. What does it mean in our context? That it's for sure that Hashem is accepting the tefillahs, the request of every single Jew in all generations that they're asking for the gula for the redemption. And as a result of their tefillahs, the gula will happen very soon. What do we mean to say? The davening, the fact that Jews, the tefillahs of the Jewish people throughout all the generations for Geula. They combine one to the other. Till eventually they affect that the Geula will happen literally. Not just in a spiritual sense. Venimsa. What follows is that in fact the Geula is affected, is happening because of the Tfilas throughout all the generations. If even one Tfila would be missing, then God forbid the Geula would be delayed by one moment. In other words, the Rebbe is saying that if you put these two things together, the previous Sicha and Agaris HaTshuva, and this Sicha, I think they go hand in hand. The Rebbe is saying that when you dive into Hashem, and you ask, and just want to ask you that Hashem should bring the Geula, that in fact is starting the Geula process. And that, 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 hap- that and that's true when Jews dive in hundreds of years ago. It started the Geula process. Okay, there was things that withheld the Geula. It wasn't yet ready because there were still Jews who were doing Averis. They were still sinning. So, we won't get ready for the process to be fulfilled um, very speedily. However, but every time that Yid Davids, he is hastening the Geula. He is making the process happen quicker. And even if for whatever reason Hashem is delaying the process, till it actually literally happens in the physical sense, but that doesn't mean that Yid Davidin doesn't have an effect and hasten the Geula. So now, this is primarily relevant in our generation. Now, in previous generations, so they davened for the Gula, they started the process. However, they had to wait till for us, for our generation, till we'd finish it off. But now in our generation, there's nothing else to wait for. We're literally in the footsteps of Mashiach. We're literally in the end of days with the land in the last generation of Golos. Now, so through davening, now we'll affect Mashiach now. Now now in the literal sense without any explanations. Already in the time of the Gemara, so it already said that all the end times for Mashiach have been passed, like we discussed in some of the previous classes. Definitely in the generation of the Mitzvah Rebbe, second Chabad Rebbe. 
שכסב בספרי שערי תשובה של אחרי גזרס תחמתת וכו', כבר יצאו בני ישראל ידי חייבס, הואיני ידי חייב למשיח. He writes in his Sefer called Shari Tshuva that after the, the Chmelitsky riots in the year of Tachvetat in 1648 uh, and 49, so we, with that the Jewish people already fulfilled the, the, the birth pangs of Mashiach. So definitely, definitely after the previous Rebbe, he publicized the concept that the Gulas will come immediately. So this, I, this is our sages say, it's up to Tshuva. We already have the concept of the Alta Tshuva. Now, the Rebbe points out over here in the continuation of the Sikh, but unfortunately there's other people who unfortunately have, uh, or have, uh, have ganged up against and they're not interested in, in bringing Mashiach, and therefore, uh, unfortunately, they, <coughs> they're cooling off the Jewish people from davening for Mashiach. However, the Rebbe says that Hashem has saved us from their hands, and therefore, even the last, um, uh, Moments of Golas, we l'chol b'nei Yisrael hayu over b'shvaisem that for all the Jewish people there was light in the dwelling places. In other words, that even in the end of Golas, we already see the positive aspects and we're already ready for the Gula. So basically, the point that comes out from this sicha is that in fact, it's not just that our fila is affecting, is happening something beruchnius, right? It's not just happening something like the Gula begashmius, right? There's something happening, right? There's something happening in the in the physical world that is some type of Gula. But literally, our tefillahs are making the Gula happen. And the more we dive in for it, so the more our, our tefillahs are hastening the Gula. So on that note, we have this last uh, mimer over here, the mimer of Ayigash Eil of Yehuda from Tafshin Chafei, 1965. Where the Rebbe makes a similar point that every time we dive in, so there's an effect in the physical world. Over here, the Rebbe explains that a little bit different, um, but it, I think it, it, it fits in with uh, some of the ideas that we learned before. So, we mentioned before that there's this concept that um, mentioned in Chsidis and Shalom that when you dive in, it's possible that the Hashem will only fulfill your request in the spiritual sense. So, Rabbi over here mentions, Many my Maimorim, it's explained, it's possible that when an individual dive in, it's possible that the Hashpa, that Hashem's fulf- uh, fulfillment of his request, should remain above in a spiritual world and should not come down here below in this world. But in the Maimur of the Tzemach Tzedek that the Rebbe's Maimur is based on, that the Hashpa, that what Hashem is giving you, what you're asking for, comes down Lamata. Very interesting. It says, however, it's possible that it's concealed. You don't see it. Now, the, what the Rebbe is going to explain now is why you must say that. Why must you say that, why in this Maimur, what is the Tzemach Tzedek saying that Hashem must be answering you in a physical sense? What's wrong with saying that Hashem answers you just in a spiritual sense? Yish Loimar says, The Kivan da'ba kosha de tefila, who should tushbaha ashpolamata, since what are you asking for in davening is that the hashpa should come down here. That Hashem should heal the sick and and give you parnasa, bless the years. So therefore, even if Hashem is going to give you what you're asking for, but not down here, only in a spiritual sense. So you dominate the bracha lavatolah because that's not what you asked for. You asked for panasa. You asked to be healed, right? And what is he giving you? Something spiritual, the spiritual equ- equivalent. That's not what you asked for. So from this it's clear, says the Rebbe, that every time you dive in, so it comes down here. However, it's possible that it should be concealed. Now, I don't know exactly what that means. 
to be honest with you. I don't know what it means exactly that it, somehow it came down here and just we don't see it. That means seemingly that when you're asking that you should be healed and you weren't healed, unfortunately, right? So the truth is that you were healed. You just don't see it. <laughs> okay, we have to understand what that means, but that's what it says. Umam Shech Maha Maimur, the Rebbe continues in the Maimur. The Zeshullah for Amim Hamshachas Hashefa He Behelim. Now, why is it that sometimes it's concealed? It's because there's many, there's many, uh, so to say, sheets, he calls it. There's many uh, spiritual um, blo- blockages, so to say, that are separating. In other words, it's not that it's not coming down, it's coming down in such a way that it can't be revealed. It's just that there's, so to say, there's like curtains which are blocking it, that we can't see, see it. The Rabbi gives us an example. For example, if you give someone a present in a closed box, the present is there in its entirety. It's only because the box is covering over it, so you can't take it, it's not revealed. So, but it's here. So that's what it means, that, in other words, the hashpa that we're asking for, it's coming down here. We're asking for Mashiach, Mashiach is coming down here, it's happening, it's here in the world. Because we don't see it. Now, why is it that we don't see it? So we'll see soon in the Maimur, it's because we, we're not davening with Kavana. That's what he says, and we don't didn't do tshuva properly. So that's why it's not begoli. We'll, we'll see in a second. Now he adds in the mind that it's a machzadik. They call out filais. That all the, the hashpois that came down through all the filais. It's not only that they're there in their entirety in a hidden way. Eventually they will be revealed. Where the entire Jewish people will, will be aroused and do a complete tshuva, and they will nullify all these curtains, so to say, that are in the way. Then all of the hamshachis will be revealed. The kolat village of Meshach holidays of all the tefillahs that the Jewish people have been davening in all the generations. In other words, when Mashiach will come, and all the Jewish people will, will have already done tshuva, and all of them. Codes will be gone. We'll see how Hashem has fulfilled all, all our requests. Um, so now we just have to take it on faith that our requests are being fulfilled. And eventually, we'll see how it's actually happening. Now the Rebbe is going to add a very important point over here, the next part of the mind movement. Tzorich Lahaven. This is all, we have to, for the continuation, the part of the mind movement that we didn't learn. But basically what he said earlier in the mind movement is that he explains the reason why ha- uh, the way davening affects a hashpa, that Hashem should answer, answer you, is because when you daven, davening, you're davening with bitl tasha. The very fact that you're standing like a, a, a servant before his master, so that, that bitl that you have, that feeling of, of, of uh, self nullification before Hashem, that itself is what arouses above that Hashem, that it, it reaches higher than the whole city of Hishtal Shalos, Beyond, the, beyond nature, and uh, that's what causes that it should be able to bring down, makes the person a keli, the person a fitting receptacle, that he should be able to bring down whatever he is requesting. So the question is like this: The reason why when you daven, you're able to draw down this light that's beyond. Nature, which actually makes a change in the world, that it heals the sick and blesses the years, even if based on nature that's impossible. It's because of the avoda that the person is doing in the avening. So seemingly, when do you have that avoda? When you're davening with kavana, with a proper intention and with that feeling of bittel. However, but the Maim, it says different. It says every time a Yid davens and says a bracha with Hashem's name, so it's changing the world. But you just don't see it. So seemingly, how could it change the world if you don't, if the Bittl's not there? If the Kavana's not there, if you're not davening with intention, how will it have the desired effect? 
And here the Rebbe says something unbelievable. The explanation is, is as follows. The Be'ez, she is Yisrael Mispalom. When a Jew davens, Gam Kesheinay Mechavin Betfilase, even if he's not consciously having Kavona when he davens, he's not having this proper intention. Deep down, he is like a servant standing before the, the, the king. Now, even if you don't realize it, but that's what is happening right now. When you're standing before Hashem and davening, is deep down inside your neshama, you have that bittal to Hashem while you're davening. But it's just not felt. It's not that it's not there, it's just you don't recognize it, you're not conscious of it. But the fact that you're standing to daven before Hashem means that you have that bitl right now. Therefore, every single time you daven, you have that avayda. You have the halas man, which is which arouses this oil that's higher than say the rishdal shalos, that's higher than nature that changes the world and affects whatever you're asking for. It's only that the change that's happening in the world, the hashpa that you're drawing down, it's concealed. You don't see it. In other words, it's like mida keneged mida. In other words, since you are not davening the kavana, in other words, your bittal is behelam, it's not conscious. So therefore, also the effect of your davening. The way Hashem is fulfilling your request is also behelam. It's also you also don't see it. You can see it. So therefore, it follows. So the Rebbe concludes. So that means the more your kavana, the more your bittel and davening, the more it's revealed. So mili abakashu begili yaiser. So the, the the more Hashem will fulfill your, your request. Because mida can get mida. In other words, the more the more your bittel to Hashem is revealed, so the more the effect of your bittel, which is the change in the world that happens as a result of that oil, that light that you draw, that you draw down into the world, the more you see it, the more it's revealed, the more it's apparent. So in other words, to, to, to tie this all into the gula, davening for the gula, so the Rebbe is saying every time you daven for the gula, even if you're not paying attention, even if you, you're not thinking about the words that you're saying, so you are affecting, and you're bringing the gula, and it's happening, it's here in this world. It's just, you don't see it, we don't see it. When Mashiach will come, so then we'll see how all, the effect of all of our tefillahs, and we'll see how all of our tefillahs actually brought uh, the gula. And, the, and the, the, another main, main point is, the more kavani you have, the more bittal you have, so the more we'll see how our tefillahs are actually being fulfilled, and how we're actually, we'll actually see the pashtas in the simple sense that, we're gonna, that, that Mashiach is going to come to pashtas. So just to, to sum up, to, to summary over here, we have a number of points over here. So first of all, the main point, we said that davening for Mashiach, it strengthens our muna, right? Just the very fact that we daven to Hashem, we know Hashem shows that we know that Hashem is in charge, and we believe in Hashem. That's point number one. Point number two is that every single tefillah affects a spiritual goal, a spiritual redemption. And that the Rebbe pointed out, it's the main thing for a Jew, not just a side thing. Just we're not, we're not satisfied with that. Number three, when we say the tefillah of a minion, when you have a tefillah of Rambim, that affects also some type of gula in the physical world. And according to the, the, the mind where we learned, even every individual who davens. A, a fourth point is that every single tefillah affects of the gula, that, that Hashem should begin the gula process. It's only our abedus that slow down the process. It's our sins. But every... Every time we daven, it's, it's starting that process and, and hastening that process. So it follows that every tefillah actually hastens the gula. And then the point is that the love eventually we will see, it will be revealed how, how all of our tefillahs were in fact answered and how the gula was actually brought through our tefillahs. And uh, the last point is the more kavana, the more bitl a person has when he davens, the more he will see how his request is actually being fulfilled. So that's the Nakuda that we have to should be mechazek us and strengthen us and davening for Gula that Hashem is listening, Hashem is answering our tefillahs and it is happening and we should be zoicha, we should merit to see Mashiach, the pashtos in the literal sense, l'mata me'asorot fachem, in this physical word, take it from Yad Mamish um, immediately. And as with Hashem, next week we will hear a share from Rabbi Perlstein, more getting into the specifics of davening about being seven Gula, the tefillah, and in davening itself 
um, more of the connection between the Pirush Hamilus of Davening and Moshiach. So stay tuned.